break the tire loose. So what I like to do is take the, uh, the valve stem nut off and I use these uh, valve caps that have a, a valve stem tool built into them because then I don't have to wonder where I can find a valve stem tool. And the first thing you do is pull the valve stem out. Alright, so I've got some Ruglide in a spray bottle and I'm going to put some of this around the edge because this makes life easy. Now, the first thing to try is stepping on it. It's a cheap tire, so I may actually break the bead loose like this. If not, at least I'm giving the Ruglide a chance to work down in there. Doesn't look like the beads breaking loose. So I'm gonna take my tire irons and work it around. There it goes. Okay, now with a good tire, this is a Chen Sheng tire. I bought in Unit Oklahoma on my way to the jailbreak last year. But with a good tire, it's quite a bit more difficult than that. Okay, so now I need to break the bead loose on the other side. You don't want to lay the thing on the disc. So let me get my roux glide. All right, having a little trouble, there's a couple of things we can do. All right, one of the things we can do is I've got this trash can made out of a 20 gallon drum and it's got a piece of hose on it. And so what that means is I can work the tire like this. Another thing you can do is get some chunks of two by four, put them on the ground in order to work it. So I'm gonna just kind of work the bead here. Might have to put a little more root glide on there. Okay, no more root glide. These rims are the toughest rims I've ever seen on anything because there's no drop center to them to speak of. Ah, there we go. Okay, so the beads pop loose. All right, now. Bead loose. We're gonna lever the first bead off. So the trick is, you want to drive the bead into this. This is the drop to the rim right here. You want to push the bead on this side as far up in there as you can. You don't want to be right at the valve stem. So you push the bead up in there as far as you can. You can take your levers. This time we go with three irons. Usually one of them just falls out. Kind of like that. Alright, there's one. There's two. Oh, come on. There we go. There's three. You don't want to put pressure on the disc because you'll warp it. Alright, that got it. 
this one out. There we go. So the first bead is off. So the first bead off, gotta get the tube out. Push the push the valve stem in. This part's always kind of painful on the hands. Okay, there's the tube. So now, gotta get the second bead off, which is always easier. Okay, once you get this guy started, normally, ah, Lordy, once you get it started, normally you can just break it off the tire, I mean break it off the wheel. And there's the wheel. All right, so we've got the wheel off, and what I'm going to do is, is bang on the spokes and make sure none of them need to be adjusted, because if they need to be adjusted while you have the tire off, it's the best time. None of the spokes are dead, so you don't get to see tightening the spokes. Okay, while we've got the wheel off, it's a good time to check the wheel bearings. So to do that, you stick your finger in there. Actually, you remove the, uh, the cup, and you stick your finger in there, and you can feel the wheel bearing rotate. And if it feels real graunchy, it needs to be replaced. So this guy feels pretty good. That guy feels really good, and we'll do the carrier bearing as well. Oh yeah, that feels fine. Okay, all right. So I've got the tire here. Bought it mail order. Save money. So the first thing I want to do is remove the uh, the sticker, and then want to kind of bang it a little bit and see if there's any crud that's gotten in it. Because if you get, I don't know leaf crud or something gets kicked up in it from shipping or the garage or the carton that's shipped in or in the factory, I mean the warehouse, um, that crud can get in your tube and give you a flat. So I always like to try to get rid of that stuff. In this case, i got a piece of crud right here I'm trying to get. And I got it. Okay. So now, the thing you want to do is find the direction of rotation and the balance mark. I'm going to get my glasses for that. Alright, so here's a rotation arrow. Now remember the brake goes on the left side, so that rotation arrow is going to be like this. So this tire can only go on this way. So now let's check there's some balance marks, and those are the only balance marks. Okay, so we're going to get some Rue Glide, and uh, I'm going to plan this so it goes on the right way. So we're going to put this bead over this edge of the rim, and so that the disc is up when we're trying to lever the, the final bead over, so the balance marks are going to be down. So first we're going to do this rim, this bead. And we'll worry about the getting the balance marks in the right place in a minute. Okay, so now, oh yeah, the drop center. This is the, the drop center, and you want to make sure 
This is not much of a drop center when you compare it to a lot of other wheels. You want to make sure you have a rim band or at least some duct tape or electrical tape around there and a hole for your, uh, for your valve stem. You don't want the, uh, the uh, uh, spoke nipples to be touching the tube because they will wear holes in it. Okay, so now back to the turns. Okay, this is a Metzler and it's a real stiff tire. Probably should have put it in front of the space heater for a while. Loosen it up. Okay, so we've got a couple tire irons in there. And with any luck, the bead's going to pop over. There we go. Okay. There. So we've got the first bead in. Let's try not to lose the tire irons inside the tire. Okay, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna reuse this tube. So before I do, I'm gonna blow it up. And we'll put the, the stem back in, the core, and put a little spit on that so it seals real well. I could put Rue Glide on there or something, but in any case, I'll put that bad boy in there. Then I'm going to look at this tube real carefully. I want to inspect it here where it would rub the, uh, the nipples uh, for the spokes and see if I see or feel anything that, that looks to be uh, uh, a wear spot. And I think we're doing okay. So what I like to do is put pal talcum powder on the tube because what this does is uh, let, it lets the tube slip around inside the tire and, uh, and run cooler. So what I do is put some on the inside, kind of rub it around with my hand. I do this every time, so where did all the talcum powder go from last time? It just kind of got used up, I guess. Okay, so now i got a bunch of talcum powder on there. And now, I'm going to fit it in the tire. So, I have to find the, uh, the valve stem hole. And I'm going to let some of the air out of this, but not a whole lot. Okay, so now you can see how it's got some air in it, but it's still squishy. The idea is... If you don't have any air in it, you're more liable to pinch it, and if you have too much in it, it's, uh, it's impossible to fit the tire. So, what I want to do is get the tube in here. I cleaned the rim real good. You didn't see that part. So, I stuff the tube in all the way around. Okay. Now, a difficult part, and that is getting the stem, the valve stem, to come through the hole. And different people have different methods. Some folks like to uh, tie a piece of fishing line or dental floss or something on there, but I prefer just the brute force method, maybe some cussing. Okay, I got it. So now, as soon as you get it, you want to get that nut on there so that it doesn't back out. But you don't want to screw the nut all the way on. It's just uh, just get it on, screwed on there till it's uh, till, till the valve stem's poking out the other end. Of course, I'm trying to screw the nut on with my left hand, and I'm right-handed. Okay, now the fun begins. The first thing you want to do is get the, 
marks lined up with the valve stem because most manufacturers mark the tire at the, uh, at the lightest place. So you want to put that at the valve stem. And you can see how the valve stem is kind of turning back and forth a little bit. You want to try to get it centered. But this is not the final fitment because it's probably going to rotate around as we, as we lever it on there. Now we've got the disc up, the first bead's on there, and it's time for some more Rue Glide. begins. Okay, as before, you don't want to start or finish at the valve. So what I'm going to do is try to walk this tire on here. Okay, we're coming past the valve now. Get the bead way down in there. Here's where it starts getting tricky. Almost. Maybe I can work that with my heels. Nope. Okay, one thing we could try here is a C-clamp stop thing. Okay, we've got to get that last little bit of the bead over. So it looks like it's going to take a, just walking it on. Just walking it on with the turns. There it goes. Okay. All right. Now, the tire's fully mounted, but the bead's not seated. And we've got to make sure that the marks are at the valve stem. So they look to be pretty close there. So it's time to uh, inflate the tire. So we've got to get the, the nut screwed on enough to get the valve stem out far enough to get the inflator on. Okay, now we're going to uh, inflate the tire and seat the beads. Okay, so um, you know the beads have been seated when you can see this, this edge here, you see this little line is uh, equidistant from the rim all the way around and it is on both sides. There's a couple of things you can do if it won't seat. Of course, if you use Rue Glide, it'll seat easily, but if, if you don't, you can, sometimes you can pick up the tire and beat it where it didn't come out, whatever. Anyway, I run it up to 50 pounds, which is not where I'm going to run the tire, and I tighten the nut up. I'm going to take the valve stem back out, completely let all the air out of the tube and so that the tube can settle, and then I inflate it to the final pressure. Okay, so now with the, uh, with the tube totally deflated, it totally relaxes. The bead is still seated all the way around the tire, so now when the tube is inflated, it will inflate evenly and no place on the tube will be strained. So I don't think you want to hear this thing inflate again, so now we're going to...